Hi, Barbara. It's Ian Wilson here. We chatted briefly on the phone with regards to GIS and uh, mapping solutions. Uh, I thought rather than put everything in an email, I'd put a, a brief video together to, to demonstrate some of the, the services I provide and then also showcase the, the QGIS GIS uh, open source desktop solution, uh, which is something I also provide training in. So, so have a look at this video and uh, let me know what you think. Cheers. Okay, so the, the first thing I thought I'd do is just show you this uh, this desktop that I'm talking about, this uh, QGIS desktop GIS solution. So I'm just going to open up this application now. So when that window opens up, you'll notice it's it's much the same as the other GIS applications where you've got your table of contents, where your layers will be will be shown or, and displayed, and then also this map vin window or this uh, map view. So I'm going to add some data to give you an idea of how this works. I'm going to add some roads, urban, uh, and this one here, which is the city of Cape Town Metro. I'm going to add all of those. And just drag this one to the bottom. Put this one to the bottom. And then just zoom to this one. Okay, so, so as you see, the, the, the layers are represented here and then, and then rendered and displayed in the map view. And the order that they appear here is the order that they are drawn in. So I'm just going to select this one uh, and just say zoom to layer. And then I can use my little navigation tools just to get a little closer. Zoom in there. And if you've got no no um, layer style set up, uh, it, it, has, it, it adds some random styles. So what we can do is change those now. So I'm going to select roads and uh, just go select some uh, default Default styling for these roads. Okay, there we go. There are the roads, and you can change these. Uh, you can color these up depending on what type of road it is as well. Whether it's a residential road, a trunk road, an arterial road, that sort of thing. And I'm going to do the same for urban. And I want the outline to be like a light gray, and then the the full background to be a gray. Fly that one. There we go. And then this background layer, this. So a Cape Town background layer, I'll just make this gray as well. And I'll choose that same gray. Okay, and then for the outline, I'll actually say no outline, so no pen. Okay, so so this is the. Um, I'll just show you quickly. If we if we if we click on our, our layer in the table of contents and we go to label or layer properties, this is all the the attribute. Uh, uh, styling uh, and, and features that you can um, uh, apply to this layer. We can uh, do table joins, we can adjust the fields and how they render, we can label uh, on various um, attributes and then change the style as we have been doing and then the general tab what is the, what is the projection or the coordinate reference system, where is the part, what's the path name of that particular file etc and you can do sorts of queries uh, which is a lot more high level detail which we can do at a later stage. Uh, I'll just show, the, show you the labeling one. So for roads, if we say properties and we choose the labeling tab, uh, currently it says no labels. We want to say show labels. We want to choose the the attribute uh, name. We're going to put a buffer on our label. We're going to change the size of the label to 6. We're happy with the default styling. Placement curved and on the line. Last thing is we'll just adjust this rendering to be merged. And there we go. So now we've got uh, the, the the streets uh, labeled with their, with their road name. And if you open the attribute table for that particular layer, you can have a look at the other, the other values uh, for the records. And this is the, the column that we use to label on. And you can also, but you can color up on different things. So you can color up on, on class, uh, or you could color up on name as well, but then that would be a bit random because you'd have every single unique road name would have a different color, which, which wouldn't really make sense. So that's pretty much how you would create a, a map from scratch, which is quite, quite useful and quite easy. What you would then do after you were happy with your styling is you can create a, uh, what they call a, a layout. Um, in, in the composer. So if we say OK, that'll open up a composer view. And if I just zoom to my full extent of the composer view, this is where you'd add the map and then export it uh, as an image or print it to a printer. 
So there we've added the map to our view and you can add all sorts of other things like the, the a scale bar and you can change the styling of this. You can put a, a legend over here and you can change the styling of the legend. There are all sorts of things here with a background color, maybe make it <laughs> pink. And you can add other things like uh, oh, all sorts of things. Here we're going to add a uh, an image. So we're going to change this image to to one which I thought might be interesting. Okay, in the images uh, folder in my projects folder, I've I've downloaded this one. You know, that's a, that's the kind of thing you can do. So you can spend quite a bit of time with all these little. Um, Features and you can start making your map look uh, quite nice and pretty based on uh, you know, your styling and your template that you would want to set up. So that's uh, creating a map, styling it, and then actually creating a print composer which you would then export as an image or a a print as a as a layout. Okay, so that's that's the basic gist of the map work kind of stuff, which you, is really a lot more involved than that. But I've given you the brief um, version. And then what you can also do is, is add client data. Okay, and by that I mean you can, uh, you can create a spreadsheet with all the information for your clients. So I'll just show you a little example. So for instance, you have a spreadsheet of your, your client data. So client's name, the, the business type, the address. Uh, what else do we need? The city that they're in. The province that they're in, the country that they're in, and then this is the port which is important, the part which is important, it's your your coordinates um, for X and Y, or Latin longitude, and with those added we can add uh, our data and then load it as a, as a, as a spatial layer in your project. Okay, so we're just going to add a few of your clients um, from your magazine. So oh, if we just add a couple here, um, like Regal Cycles, we'll just change the, the width of these. And they are uh, Sports and Hobbies, their address. 34 Main Road, City is Fishhook, Western Cape, okay, and then uh, this is where you need accurate information, so depending on whether you wanted to capture this yourself or ask the client to get it off, pull it off their cell phone, you would need the the geographic coordinates for each of the properties if they wanted to be displayed in the map. So let's see, X and then the Y is minus 34. In GIS, your, your, everything that's um, latitude and below this in the southern hemisphere is negative. 41 and 48. And I'm just going to add a few more after this. Okay, right, so I've added a few more. And fixed a couple of typos, and uh, I can now export this spreadsheet as a CSV. So the comma delimited uh, text file is the format we need to save it as. So we're going to save it as that. Okay, that's saved as the CSV. No, we don't need that anymore. Now you can add it as what's called an events theme, and we use this little button here, which is the uh, little button to Add a comma delimited layer and we can browse for it. Here it is here, business csv.csv. Okay, and then this is the file format uh, option. So we can see the defaulting file format separators is the correct one. So you know it's the correct one because each of the, the fields we added in the spreadsheet is displayed as a separate field here. If it was incorrect, it would just be, you know, here we've got one field with all of the um, Values separated by commas, but because the commas is the delimiter, then here we've got separate fields. Okay, and we're going to use the X field, uh, which is the X chord, and the Y field as the Y chord. And we'll say okay.
and then this is the important bit we need to tell the program what is the coordinate reference system and in this instance it's WGS84 and we say OK and they have been added now they they're a little bit um, dull because they are different colors so let's just uh, quickly change those to a style that we can see uh, so we can tell the program that we want to categorize based on a column and it's the type we're going to classify all of those I'm going to change the size up here to to size of 4 let's say OK I'm going to remove that one let's say apply and there we go there are um, just turn this off so we can see them properly okay so here's our dummy layer with our with our information that we added using the uh, the spreadsheet this is a just a quick view into the attribute table and if we use the little uh, identify tool and click on a couple of the properties it opens a little window and it sh gives us a, a quick view into the values for each of those features like this one here etc Okay, so now that is a quick basic look at, at how you might uh, import data from a, uh, a database or a customer database. And this can then be saved and, and queried. Now one of the, the cool things about QGIS, uh, or another cool thing, is it's got this um, plugin called QGIS2 Web. So you can uh, export and, and view your information in a web browser and then upload it to an FTP server. Uh, to use on a website. So I'll just quickly show you how that works. So in this little example I'm just going to remove all this information because it's not going to be used in this query. I am going to label it quickly on uh, name. So I do want to label, yes please, I'm going to just say name, apply. Okay so there we go. And then using this little uh, Plugin, which has been turned on from the same place as the as the other plugin repository, and it's called QGIS2 Web, uh, and this is something uh, you would also need to turn on. Okay, it is in here somewhere. So it's already turned on because here it is displayed in our web menu. It's called QGIS2 Web, and we say create a web map. And now all we do is we we change the settings uh, depending on what our requirements are. So I'm just going to. Uh, for the pop-up dialog box, I want the labels to be in line, the field, or the content, or the value to be in line with the actual the field value. I want to export it to a specific folder. And in this instance, I've got a projects folder called Web Map, so that's fine. Uh, and all and the settings you would choose here um, uh, vary depending on what your requirements are. I want to add a little address bar. Uh, the, uh, the layers list I want expanded. I'm going to highlight on hover. I also want to search the layer based on the business name. I don't need a measuring tool. I'm going to show pop-ups on hover and I want to export it as a leaflet type map. And this is a just a quick view as to what the data is going to look like. It's almost like a um, like a preview, preview window. And these are the base layers you can add to include in the map. So that's why I deleted the, the roads and the urban data because I've already got a base layer. And if I update this, I can choose an open street map layer and update it. There we go, we've got our base data already. And that's what it looks like when you when you open one of the, the dialog boxes for each of the of the um, of the features. So there we got it. Now all we need to do is push export and that'll be saved. And it opens up automatically in a, in a web browser, and this is what it would like would look like on a web page. And that's pretty much the basics of it. You would then go and fine tune the information here or, or the viewability of this based on the code. But you could then package this and save it into a, a an iframe on a website. So that's pretty much how it works. If I just show you quickly what the the actual um, page looks like, I mean sorry, the, the packaged info looks like. If we just backpedal slightly here and go into this web map, this folder, okay this is how it, it, the program works or the, the plugin works. It uh, packages your layers from your QGIS project into an HTML text file. Let's just open that again, sorry. 
Okay, if I open this in a text editor, this is what it looks like. So this is just an HTML file uh, which references um, style sheets and data that is packaged in those folders. Okay, this is just the coloring of the layers, etc. And you wouldn't really need to tweak this unless you, you were really getting involved in changing or and and fine-tuning your map. Uh, the layers are saved in here in a .js file. Uh, the markers and the legend are saved here. And that's what you would do. You would basically take this layer and you would upboard, uh, upload it to a website and be able to, you know, to view your map online uh, via a, a browser. And I'll just show you a quick example of, of one I've done for this particular page. And you can view it. Um, I'll give you the link to it as well so you can view it in your own browser and get an idea of what is possible. Okay, before I, I move on, I just want to show you one last thing. Uh, so if we go back to QGIS, and uh, if you, for instance, didn't have the coordinate information uh, from a client, but you did have their address and it was in this format, then what you can do is you can use a geocoding plugin to locate um, the majority of your addresses. It isn't 100% accurate, but it will locate at least 90% of your stuff. So this is how you would do that. So this is another CSV for the addresses. I don't want to worry about that for now. And there's a geocoding option. We're going to geocode with a CSV. We can browse for that CSV. Check folder, spatial tables, addresses, CSV. And then it should default, uh, provided you've got the uh, similar or the same uh, address fields, field names. See, this one's wrong. That one says city field, but it, we change that to town. And then we need an API key. Let's see if this one still works. And the output can be in that place, in the, uh, as a shapefile and addresses. And then this is a an error log, and the error log will be just a, a, uh, another CSV which lists the errors. And hopefully there won't be any. We click OK, and it should run. Now the geocoding will happen. Uh, relatively quickly uh, and uh, the progress is indicated down here there we go and when it's finished hopefully you'll have a hundred percent correct import and if I open it up let's have a look this is what the attribute table looks like so that's just a way uh, of, of locating your, your client data if you don't have the coordinate the coordinates for for that particular property it's uh, a geocoding tool using the address uh, and the street number and the and the street address based on a town okay so that's just another way you can input client data right so I just want to uh, go ahead and then then briefly show you that um, yeah you know, that online map which I created as an example for your particular business Okay, so so this is the the um, the map window, the online map window as as it would be in a normal browser without being uh, embedded in an iframe. And then if you wanted to embed it on your web page, you would just uh, make it look something like this. I've just embedded it on an arbitrary page here quickly, and I've called it Maps Build Billboard, and let's see if that works. Okay, there we go. So you can see I've just embedded it on an arbitrary page here, and you could change the 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 iframe size accordingly. Um, likewise, uh, in this example, I've I've just gone for a basic example. You can split um, the legend up so that you can turn on and off the various types of businesses. Uh, in this instance, it's it's set up as a as a cluster. So as I zoom out, you'll see that. You have eight businesses in this area, and then likewise, if you in comma key, you may have have another amount if you chose the cluster option. Um, it's quite nice the cluster option because uh, it, it sort of consolidates and makes the map quite neat as you zoom out. And then as you hover over each of the businesses, it just pops up with information about it, and uh, you know there could be the telephone number here, a web link. Etc. So it's more of a, a directory, uh, quite a nice directory um, option compared to to the existing Google Map, and um, customizable and and quite 
readily and easily um, exportable from a QGIS project. So, so you can really, I mean, the limits of this mapping is generally um, restricted by your ability to, to maybe do a bit of coding and then also um, your imagination really. So yeah, uh, just thought I'd uh, create that quick video to, to give you an idea of, of what's possible. And if you are interested, uh, give me a shot and, and we can chat further. Or I can come in and, and meet you and, and have a chat about, about other stuff over coffee or something like that. Okay. Thanks, Barbara. Take it easy. Uh, we'll chat uh, another time. Cheers.